everybody, welcome back to I Will Be Okay Thursday. For this week's video, I will be talking about complexes. Now, how I'm going to format this video is I'm going to talk about a little bit of the history of complexes, give you an array of definitions because I think something that's a little bit harder to understand, it's pretty useful to kind of get like different perspectives of it. And then I'm going to give some examples and like types of complexes. And then I'm going to talk about my own complexes and complexes that I've witnessed in action um, to give you a full understanding of what they are and maybe to help you identify them more easily in yourself. Alright, so back in ancient times, complexes were referred to as demons. And full identification with complexes was referred to as possession. Complexes have a compulsive feeling, so, you know, it's interesting to kind of think back of like images of people who were, you know, supposedly possessed and how it felt like it was something that was completely out of their control, you know, as if it was an entirely different entity. So I went through my notes from school and wrote down like the best definitions that I had written down and one of them was that, you know, I, th I thought this was probably the best definition and I'll tell you a few. But it says it's an emotional shock that splits off a bit of the psyche. And essentially, complexes are splintered psyches. There's no difference in principle between a fragmented personality and a complex. A complex is a splinter psyche that behaves with a remar remarkable degree of autonomy and coherence, overriding will and blocking memory. So kind of how I said that it also has like a compulsive feeling nature to it. And so the, the origin of complexes is almost always trauma and the complex will really interfere with that person's life and basically go against the habitual attitude of the ego. And the complex then will interfere with our day-to-day -day life and it doesn't allow us to fully embody ourselves and our, our full possibility and potential as an individual to respond to situations. Instead, we react through the complex. So one of the ways I wrote down like a nice way to kind of understand it, because for me, you know, like analogies and imagery really help me to kind of envision how something works. So let's just say that like when the trauma was caused, the self couldn't fully handle the pain. So instead of that ego like dealing with it head on, you created like a shield, right? So you put up this shield and so had the shield deal with the situation. But that shield then stays in your mind, you know, until you become aware of it because you don't even realize it. But now like whenever that shield recognizes like something similar to that trauma that was created, it goes, whoop, the shield just comes up, right? And it protects the self from experiencing that pain that the shield has protected you from. So what's really interesting is that it works very similarly to kind of how, how our immune system works. So for example, your immune system, you know, the way that it stays healthy is that it, it continuously, you know, scopes for, you know, pathogens, any kind of like bacteria or viruses that may try to attack, you know, the central system, which is you. And so I feel like a complex in a way is, a, is the same way anytime it, it remotely kind of recognizes a similar attack or trauma, it puts up that shield just as your immune system learns to do to stay healthy. So basically complexes are fragmented parts of our consciousness that were created to protect us from similar traumas that we have experienced in the past. So the issue with complexes is that they cause us not to fully accept and embody our full individual nature. Now what's interesting about be the, the word individual, right, in division is kind of how I think of it now because I think that we've been taught to think that the self is like this one unity, right? I mean there is a central kind of consciousness but Within that, I feel like there's so many different parts of us. And we do have also positive, I think, complexes, and we also have complexes that are more disturbing. So I wanna share this quote with you which says, psyche is not an indivisible 
unity, but a divisible and more or less divided whole. Now we have so many different parts of ourselves and you know, the, the thing with complexes is it's not something for you to think, oh, I have to get rid of them, but it's something that we have to work with. We have to understand because like I said, we do have good complexes. Like for example, like if you had good experiences with, uh, you know, friendships or, you know, building relationships, then you're, you know, further able to enter into relationships with people where you have like a secure, you know, bond and attachment and you have like, you know, a secure line of relationship that you know you can like depend on. So that's a complex that you don't want to get rid of, right? So you kind of think to yourself like, okay, I have this constellated relational model that is positive, great. But then I have this other constellated relational model that is not working out in my favor. Again, you don't want to think to yourself like I have to get rid of that or push it out or deny it or think of it as negative. It's something that you have to just bring into your consciousness. So I also want to share this amazing quote with you. In the spirit of, you know, not denying parts of ourselves but allowing ourselves to expand. Consciousness is not a unity, being as yet uncentered by a firmly knit ego complex. Nor is it a fully integrated whole even at the higher and highest stages. Rather, it is capable of indefinite expansion. Now there is kind of like an overarching consciousness that we have within ourselves, right? But within that, I think that if our consciousness can expand in a way where we can see all of those things, it's pretty, it's pretty great. And you know, we are that fluctuation between all of them at the end of the day, right? But I think that when we can see that there is a part of ourselves that is causing us disturbance, how can we bring greater consciousness into it and understand it? And it's again kind of like going to the source. And I think understanding complexes is also an incredible way to gain consciousness over maybe these disturbing parts of ourselves. So types of complexes are like complexes from trauma and or experience in your personal life and or complexes can again be from perceptions or impressions of the collective unconscious. So like standards of beauty, standards of you know how to perform your gender and things of that nature. So a common example of a complex is a mother complex. So let's say that you be, you've become a mother and before you were a mother you would say things like oh I will never do the things that my mom did, I'll never say the things that my mom said, blah blah blah, and then you become a mother and then before you know it you're saying things that your mom said. That's a mother complex. So this is a, a constellation of another like relational model around what it means to be a mother and so without even recognizing it, you know, you've become what you have been taught basically is a mother. So it's this like constellation of being within you that has essentially taken over you now that you've actually stepped into that role. So are you really bringing your own kind of individual like potential into that or is that something that was like basically conditioned in you, you know, to kind of act and, and be this way. Now complexes won't change overnight. It's something that you have to kind of like study within yourself. So just kind of like sit with yourself and kind of see like how has it come out. And it can take literal years. You know, it can be really painful to face these parts of yourself because for example, something that I witnessed is um, you know, a family member who said that, you know, I'll never be like my father. I don't ever want to be like my father. He domestically abused my mother and XYZ and then that person got married and then he was abusing his wife. I've, I've heard actually that that story many times from people that would talk like, hey, you know, I was disgusted by what my parents did and then they're in a relationship and then they're like, oh, I'm doing the exact same things that my parents did. So again, that's, you know, that's a father and a mother complex. Now there's so many different theories on like how you can describe that and like, you know, people would say like, well, that's just conditioning and, and that's just like, you know, trauma, reliving trauma or, you know, generational curses or, you know, uh, epigenetics or you could say that's like ancestral trauma. Like there's so many different ways to describe these things. 
but in essence really what they are is how we've been taught to relate to certain things in life, certain roles, and how we have integrated our trauma into becoming something within ourselves that maybe we don't want to be there anymore, that we want to heal, that we want to become aware of so that we can live our lives to the greatest potential. Honestly, at the end of the day, like whatever you call it, it's whatever really helps you and helps you to have awareness over it. Another example of a complex I think is a really really prevalent kind of um, I don't know if I want to call it like a mother complex but it's like a, I think a lot of women are taught self-consciousness from their mother's own self-consciousness. Uh, for example like growing up you know I'd kind of watch like the women around me like tear themselves to pieces you know in the mirror and not like certain body parts of theirs and then I grew up not liking those body parts of mine so I guess you could call it like complexes about those certain areas of the body and so now I want to tell you a little story about a complex that um, I do feel like I've overcome in many ways so yeah I'll share that with you okay story time so <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, um, my the women on my mom's side of the family had very big breasts, like very big, and <laughs> I, I just thought that I was probably gonna have big boobs. Like I was like, all right, it's in the cards. Here we go. I just gotta like accept it. Once I hit puberty, that's it. So my mom kind of had this joke, and it was very lighthearted. And she would say like, eat your mashed potatoes and makes your boobies grow eat your potatoes, it makes your boobies grow. So I'd always be like, oh yeah, so I'd eat like my mashed potatoes and fries and whatever. So I hit puberty and my teta started coming in and I was like, okay, here it goes. Oh my God, I hate it. I was like, Ugh. I was really scared about having boobs because I kind of saw like the reaction that it would get from the male species and I was like wow I really don't like that so for about a year I actually taped my boobs down to make myself look completely and utterly flat then I got my period and then I was like oh my gosh I really want boobs now so I really started eating my mashed potatoes and I was like okay let's go I got my bra and whatever and about like by the time I was like 14, 15, like they were so small and my mom was like, oh, it's okay. I didn't get boobs till I was like 17 or 18. I was like, okay, I'll just keep eating my mashed potatoes. But for that time frame, I already started feeling like this, this shame around the size of my breasts and this shame around them, my, my boobs not being big enough, right, and not feeling feminine enough and needing to eat more potatoes in order to feel like my boobs were enough. So by the time I was like 17, 18, they still weren't big and my mom was like, oh, well, she was like, maybe, maybe the boob gene just skipped you and I was like, yeah, maybe it did. And I felt so much shame around my boobs, like if I was like intimate with anybody, I would be like, no, you cannot take, I don't want you to take off my bra, like I preferred to like keep it on, I didn't want people to see my boobs, I just was like, no. So I think it was between the ages of 20 and 21 where I started to really go to a lot of festivals and I went to a festival in New York City and there was a girl walking around, she was so beautiful and she had smaller boobs in mine and she was wearing pasties and they looked great. Like I was like, oh my god. And she just was so confident and it, like she, like I don't know, the way she carried herself, I was like literally inspired by her. And it was just like a complete stranger and I just remember thinking I was like if she can feel proud of her boobs like why can't I like her boobs are great she's beautiful like what what is my problem so it was kind of like that moment was kind of like the catalyst for me to really start like facing the complex that I had around my boobs so you know throughout high school and even until after that I would wear this crazy bra which I'm sure some people are familiar with called the bombshell bra from Victoria's Secret and it would make my boobs look literally two or three cup sizes bigger 
um, outside of my shirt <laughs> and it was just like it was a lie it was a hoax because then when I would like hook up with a dude it was just like oh actually this is what's happening not that <laughs> and I was like wow I'm lying I'm lying to myself I'm lying to other people I was like why like why do I feel the need to have bigger boobs like what what is it so I had this realization with my best friend like I was like why am I wearing this bra like it's not even like who I am like why am I you know pretending to to be something that I'm not when at the end of the day you know when I'm with you know somebody intimately they're gonna see the real deal <laughs> so you know I was with this guy and I remember I like wouldn't let him take off my bra and he was like why and I was like well because my boobs are small and he was like okay and I was like isn't that bad and he was like no <laughs> he's like that's that they could be great even if they're small and I was like okay yeah you think he goes yeah so I like showed him he's like your boobs are amazing and I was like are they <laughs> Like I guess they are. I was like, yeah, I guess I guess they are amazing. I'm sure that literally none of these people knew like the significant impact that it had on me. But after that, I just you know slowly really had to face like these things in myself. Like I was like, okay, like where's this come from? You know, it was from society. It was you know pressures that you know many women feel to have bigger boobs. I mean the patriarchy is constantly telling women how big their boobs should be so that's a real pressure. You know but as well like as as lighthearted as my mom meant it you know like that was that did you know create like a complex in my head like I was like wow my boobs need to be bigger I need to eat more potatoes the boob gene skipped me you know so I really had to go and like dig into that and kind of see but it was also like this deeply rooted body shame that I think a lot of mothers carry to their daughters and you know it took me years like I would say from the time I became aware of it that there was an issue around 20 like I would say I honestly wasn't like okay I love my boobs until like 24 so it took like four years yeah I would say like 24 and I genuinely was like I like <laughs> and like ever since I saw that girl I would wear pasties as well and it was in it was a way for me to express like my freedom and you know my love for my body now and also it was a way to potentially inspire other women that their small boobies are great and I actually had a girl message me and she was like hey you know like I always see you like out with your pasties and she was like because you have like shown you know your boobs <laughs> with like so much like pride and confidence she's like I for so long thought that my boobs were like horrible but then I saw yours and I was like wow if she feels so good about her boobs then I can feel good about my boobs and she's like so thank you for inspiring me and help helping me with that and I was like oh my god it's the whole reason why I did that so it was such a it was such a confirmation and yeah so that was that's my that was my journey with my boob complex and so I think that when it comes to recognizing our complexes it's something that we really have to be patient with ourselves with and what I find to be so true about the psyche and becoming aware of things is that our, our soul and our spirit really responds well to gentleness. Um, I think when we're really hard on ourselves and when we're like, Wah! you know, really trying to like, <laughs> you know, I don't know, change what we need to change. Like if we're gentle with ourselves, I really think that our mind um, responds so much better and kind of like opens up like a like a lotus flower to show us like you know the root we're like okay if you're being nice I'll show you why I'll show you what's going on so just keep that in mind all right well that's all I have for this I will be okay Thursday thank you so much for watching and again hello to all my new subscribers I appreciate you I appreciate any support I appreciate the people who continuously come back and watch my videos and I can't thank you enough just like every end of video I'm just like thank you because like you don't have to watch my videos but because you do it means so much you know <laughs> and, you know sometimes I look at the numbers and I'll get like a little discouraged because you see these people have like 
millions, thousands of you know subscribers and views and followers and whatever. But the thing is, is sometimes if I just kind of think to myself that like, yeah, maybe there's only like 26 people, 30, 40, 60 people. But if I'm sitting in a room with like 60 people who like actually just want to listen to me, that's that's a pretty big party. It's a pretty big room. So I try to see it that way and um, it makes me more appreciative um, regardless of the massive numbers or not. So thank you for your support. and. Uh, Wherever this video meets you in your day, in your life, I hope that you continue to have um, a wonderful night, day, week, month, year. Yes. Okay. Ta-ta. <laughs>